Hello everyone and welcome to this week's scripting quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you something basic and how to connect your script UI and how to connect those UI elements with some actual functionality that in today's example will do something in After Effects. It's, it's a common question in the Discord server about how you can essentially uh, interact with different buttons and have those execute different functionalities. So today we're gonna be going over exactly how to do that. We're gonna make a script with this simple slider a comp name that we can add in and when we hit new comp it's going to both take our comp name and the slider value from our ui and then activate some functionality in after effects and create that composition and open it up before we get started i do want to remind you down below hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description you can follow us on github for coding updates as well as instagram for other live updates if you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description down below by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks like Discord status, badges, live streams, and much more. And also check out the links down below to Gumroad, AE Scripts, and Adobe Exchange for other stuff that I create. All right, so we have our basic UI. It doesn't really do much yet. We can adjust some of the values, but when we change the slider, this text doesn't change. Um, we can change this text here in the edit text box. Um, but and also when we hit the create comp button, that does absolutely nothing. So the next step is to add functionality to the script UI itself. Everything inside of here that may need to change. But then there's also another section we need to make to distinguish between the specifically UI functionality we're adding, but then another section for the UI that's going to need to interact with the After Effects scripting rather than just the UI scripting. So what I like to do is kind of separate it out into two sections. We have a UI on top here, and then we show it. We center the UI and we show it. And below that, this is where I like to put all the UI code that does something to AE. And above it, I like to do all the UI code that changes only the UI. So this would be, for example, up here, we'd want to put in our code that controls when we change this slider. When we change this slider, I want this slider text to update its value to match that slider. But this doesn't make any changes inside of After Effects itself. So we'll have our own little code group for that. And then we'll have our own little code group for the UI elements that need to do something to AE, namely the create comp button in this case. When we change a UI element, there are several ways we can detect it. Uh, quite often we want to check if you click on it. Sometimes you want to check if you hover the mouse over or move the mouse out of it. There are event listeners and then some built-in classes that allow us to do stuff like this. So our UI code that only changes the UI we want to take our slider and we could say maybe like on click is equal to an anonymous function. And then we could say, hello, you clicked the slider, right? And if we run this and we go ahead and click on the slider, nothing's actually going to happen um, because it appears not everything has the same ability to detect clicks and whatnot. Uh, one thing that sliders do allow us to do is say on change, or we can even say on changing. So if I say on change, and I move the slider, as soon as I release the slider, we're going to say, hello, you clicked the slider. But if I was to change that to on changing instead of on change, this will actually uh, run this code whenever we move it. So I haven't even released the mouse and it says alert, you clicked the slider. On changing will detect it immediately when you change the value. On change won't detect it until you release the mouse to update its value. Um, of course, buttons allow you to use on clicks. I use that in most of my tutorials. And the other method of making sure that you get functionality out of stuff, say uh, the on click function doesn't work for our slider, which in this case it doesn't because it's not supported. We can add an event listener. These are sort of the basic two ways we can add functionality. Um, what we can say is we want to add a click functionality and we can create an anonymous function, which when we run does the same thing. Hello, you clicked the slider. 
event listener. So I'll go ahead and I'll do one which uh, alerts, you know, you click an event listener. The other will say I'm changing. When we run this, if I click on the slider now, nothing actually happens. I need to change this back to on changing. Let's do on change. Now you can see, uh, hello, you clicked on the slider on changing. On changing because we're changing the value here. And I think to get this click listener to work, we may need to use single quotes. Okay, so I'm going to disable my alert for the on change just so I can focus on the on click. I believe actually I might be confusing it. I might need to right click. Yes. Hello, you've clicked the slider event listener. That's because I actually just right click instead of left clicking. It's not doing anything, but a right click seems to work. So make sure you use the right version of the click. Um, I've had this issue before. Let's see. It's still right click. Um, there are several click options, which you can see inside of the JavaScript tools guide. If you go to uh, the JavaScript tools guide CC, you can see all of the different events. Um, so in this case, let's just keep it at slider dot on change. Whenever we change it, we're going to say on changing. Whenever we click on it, uh, we're going to use this event listener with zero bubbling. Um, and then we're going to say you clicked it with an event listener. So if we change the value of the slider and release, we get on changing. If we right click anywhere, we get event listener uh, indicating that we have clicked it. So this is, this is kind of the controls inside of here. If you wanted to swap out any of these elements, you could. If you wanted to add a click event listener to your edit text, you could simply switch out the edit text. And when I click on it, I'm going to now get that. I can also add this event listener to my window itself. So if I actually right click on any UI element, it's going to trigger this alert. So this is a good way to detect overall um, if something's being triggered. You can use click, you can use um, mouse over, you can use focus, defocus, all those standard event listeners. So that's the two basic ways you can add these sort of UI functionalities that are going to either do more UI stuff or uh, change the actual After Effects uh, functionality. Um, so what I want to do on the slider change is instead of alert something, I'm going to set the value of my slider text dot text. This needs to be equal to a rounded or floored version of our slider value. Because our slider value usually has a bunch of decimals, but now I want it to just display whatever the rounded number is. You can see when we get to 100, uh, it doesn't quite reach there. So I can take my slider text and set the characters to three. So that way, at least three characters will be able to fit inside of there. Now we have our comp name and our slider, which we need to use the information from to create a composition. This is our last part of this tutorial, where we are now using some UI code that does something. We can use either one of these. We can use an on change and on click anonymous function like this to trigger some After Effects stuff, or we can use an event listener to trigger some After Effects stuff. The choice is up to you. And in this case, we have a nice button and buttons by uh, default, we can use dot on click into an anonymous function. And we can simply say button click. Um, and I like just being able to use this more than an event listener, I can click button click, perfect, it works just like I need it to. When we click on this button, I want to create a composition with the name of whatever text is in here, plus whatever number the slider value is. So I'm going to need two lines of code. One is going to be a variable called comp, which we need to set up the composition. And then I'm going to say comp dot open in viewer to open the actual comp up inside of the viewer like we have here. It'll be empty, but we will make sure that we've created it successfully. To create a new composition, we'll simply say our app.project. Inside of our items, we're going to add a comp. Um, let's see if we can get these arguments right. The first name is the name of the comp, which is a custom thing that we're going to be setting up in a sec. Then the width of the comp, the height of the comp, the pixel aspect ratio, and then I think it's duration and frame rate. It could be frame rate and duration, one of the two. And then for the name, like I said, we're going to be using our slider text or our slider value and the edit text text as well. So I can say 
edit text dot text, and that will create the name of that. I can also add an underscore and then add our slider text dot text. And in the previous example, I sent this off into a function, which I'll show you in a sec. But first, let's change the values and just say comp name should be comp name 54 and open up in After Effects just like that. Uh, we still have this alert set up. We can disable that. Um, but if we wanted to, we could get this a little more organized and create a function called add comp. And this could require two arguments, the name and the number. The name is going to be the name we provide here, and the number is going to be whatever is from this slider. We can copy and paste this code that we just set up inside the onclick. And instead of using edit text.text, .text, we'll use name. Instead of slider text.text, .text, we'll use number. Now we can basically use this function wherever we want, give it whatever name and number we want, and create as many uh, compositions as we want. So instead of doing all this code on the button on click, we will say uh, add comp. And then we need the name, which is the edit text.text, .text, which will be our first argument. And the number, our second argument, will be the slider text.value. Now this will work all the same. Um, if I go ahead and just change my number, change my text in here, it will now create a method for each time I do this. It looks like our number is coming in invalid because it needs to be text, not a value. So we can now clear these up and create as many random comps as possible using our button. So that's how we can connect UI elements, either changing UI elements themselves in one section and then changing actual functionality of the program, or in this case, After Effects um, in a different section. And we do this use, using event listeners or these on change or on click anonymous functions, which allow us to take some input, whether it's a click or a mouse hover, and then do something after that, whether it's changing the actual UI above here where we show our UI or below, we can actually do some functionality and change stuff within After Effects itself. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out uh, the GitHub where I upload code updates that you can follow us there for, as well as down in the description on Instagram for other live updates. Make sure you check out the Discord server if you haven't already to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and hang out with our knowledgeable members. Also, make sure you check out the link below to become a channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks like discord status badges emojis and much more and also there's links in the description for gumroad ae scripts and adobe exchange to check out some of the other cool stuff i make thanks again for watching everyone we'll see you next time